Hey everyone, my name is Emily. My name's Amanda. Welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. Today, we are going to show you two methods to drifting a wreck. We're gonna show you one method is gonna be the turn the boat side sea, forget about your motors, we're not driving the boat and we're just only gonna focus on our fishing. The second method, we're gonna have fishing involved and we're gonna be power drifting. So with power drifting, we are going to be pushing our motors into the current. Both methods have their pros and their cons. So we're gonna show you both methods today and on top of it, I'll show you our go-to bottom fishing rig. with method one. Method one is called drifting, which quite literally is just drifting. For the sake of this video, I'm going to create a rec spot for you guys. So when you have your rec spots, you'll know how to do it. So let's look at the screen. I'm going to create a waypoint. There's my waypoint. I am going to name it. Whoops. I am going to name it. Rec. And I have a lot of recs in here, so I'm just going to put a few K's on there so it gets in the system. Okay, now I am going to go towards my wreck. Quite simply, you guys, I'm gonna drive to the wreck and I decided to mark a wreck 0.3 away. So I'm gonna drive to it and we're going to stop on the wreck. When we get there, we're going to put the boat in neutral and watch what the boat does, see which way it goes. Ready? Check out that distance, distance to destination. Three feet, two feet, five feet, we passed it. We got to the fishing spot. We are going to stop on it and we're gonna sit on it. Maybe rig a rod while you're waiting and we're gonna catch our drift is what we call it. So we're literally gonna wa watch and wait and see what the boat does. While we wait and catch our drift today, instead of rigging a rod, because my rods are already all rigged, we're just gonna talk about the pros and cons of drifting. The pro, what's a pro, Amanda? Let's start with the pro. One of the pros to drifting includes the fact that you're away from your wheel. So once we're set up and we're drifting, we can completely step away from our wheel. We can focus on fishing, we're off fishing off the side. If you're a parent and you have a kid, you can focus on your kid. If you're alone or you have one or two people and you, you, everybody wants to fish, everybody can fish. You can step away from your wheel, you can fish, you can focus on your rods. That's one of the key things to just plain regular drifting as opposed to power drifting. Power drifting is a little bit different, but regular drifting you can completely step away and you're just going to focus on your rods. Drifting is really great for calm seas and a nice day when you're with your family and you guys want to go drift the wrecks. However, if it's rough seas and being side sea might be kind of uncomfortable guys because you're going to be rocking a lot. The other thing is that if the current's really strong, you're going to have to be constantly finding bottom and constantly sitting on top of your rod and reel. So like I said, it's really good. A day like today is perfect. Like look at the conditions. Yes. Look at this. You can see how flat calm it is. There's hardly any current. So when you're drifting and there's not a lot of current, it's easy to maintain bottom. But if you have a ripping current going on or rough seas, sitting side seat is not comfortable and trying to always maintain bottom can get tough. That's when you want to switch to power drifting. But if it's nice and calm, you don't have a lot of current and you want to focus and be alone or focus with your family or just have fun to fish, today's conditions are perfect for that. Check this out guys, we have drifted from our spot this way. So what we're gonna need to do is we're going to drive up this way and then we're gonna start drifting over the wreck. We just passed the wreck. I'm gonna go probably about 100 feet past it, depending on the water depth you're fishing in, depending on how far away you're gonna to wanna to go. Okay, now I'm going to turn the boat sideways. So that way we can fish off Side. There's not a lot of sea, so it's hard for me to show you, but the seas are coming this way and the wind is coming this way. So we're turning the boat to be side sea into the seas and the wind. And basically to just explain that, make sure you understand, is we stopped on the wreck, we drifted behind the wreck, we caught our drift, we drove up that drift line, and then we drove past it. So we're going up current of the wreck. And once we're up current of the wreck, 100 feet or so, we stopped the boat, we're turning ourselves side seat, the wind is coming this way, the current's going this way, the wreck is back there. Now we can focus on fishing. In this instance, let's say we're gonna vertical jig. Vertical jig, bottom fish, whatever it is. Now I can be sideways right here. My bait, my bait, my jig, bait, whatever it is you're using, is going to go away from the boat. It's not gonna go under the boat, in front of the boat, the back of the boat. Nobody's at the wheel. Emily is letting her jig out. 
we're gonna fish on the starboard side of the boat. Somebody can fish there, somebody can fish there, somebody can fish all the way up there, and we get to leave the wheel alone. So we are turned side sea right here. We're traveling in this direction. The wreck is back this way. The current and the wind are taking us towards the wreck and our baits are up current of the boat. I'm the one drifting a bait. My bait is currently on the bottom. So if you wanna look, what I'm gonna do, so when you're drifting like this, you need to make sure you're always maintaining bottom. So you can see there's slack in my line. That's how I know I'm maintaining bottom. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my finger on the line and when I get that bite, I'm gonna feel that tug, let go. My fish is gonna run with it and eat it. I'm gonna close the bale and reel. But the important part to just drifting is that you're always maintaining bottom. So I'm gonna sit here and hold on to it, you know, check bottom every once in a while, let it out, make sure I'm on bottom. That's the key to drifting. It's nobody's at the wheel helping you maintain bottom, so it's all on you to sit here and maintain bottom. Method number two is power drifting. Now, we know that we are drifting this way, okay guys? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the bow of the boat with the current, so it's like you're riding the current, okay? The important thing is that you are, your bow is in the current and your motors are against the current. So we are going from sideways with the current to now this way with the current. Okay? Exactly. <laughs> so it's the same thing when you're gonna set up for power drifting, you're gonna need to catch a drift and do all that. But now we know that our current is traveling this way. So when you're gonna power drift, you're gonna turn your nose in the same direction as the current. So the pen, the bow is a little arrow and the arrow is showing the direction of the current and we're gonna match those two up. So we're gonna go like this and we're gonna turn the boat like this. Our transom, our motors, our motors are going to go against the current. They're gonna go against the current and the current's coming this way, our motors are gonna face that way. The major benefit to power drifting, in my opinion, is A, the anglers do not have to worry about maintaining bottom because you are drifting properly and your sinkers are going to be hitting bottom nicely. The other benefit is if it's rough, you're not side sea guys, you're kind of backed into the seas. It's much more comfortable if you have people that get sick or just you don't want to be rocking around all day guys. So when you're power drifting, the angler doesn't have to constantly maintain bottom because Emily, if she's the captain for the day, she is going to have the motors in reverse helping me maintain bottom. It's her job to make sure my sinker is on bottom. I don't have to worry about that. I just sit and I wait for my bite. So that's one of the advantages of power drifting. It's, it's actually easier in the angler, but you do need a captain or someone at the wheel making sure that you're drifting in the correct direction. Turn the boat. I'm gonna turn the boat. All right. Let's go. I can feel the wind, guys. So I'm going to turn myself so the wind is coming this way. As you can see, the waves are coming this way. The current is going this way. My motors are in reverse. They're in and out of reverse keeping us, essentially we are perpendicular to the waves. So you have to imagine the boat is perpendicular to the waves going this way, the current's going this way, and the bow is pointing the current. Emily is at the wheel, she's facing backwards, and all she's gonna do is take the motors in and out of gear. To this, my apologies, I'll interrupt you, Amanda. This not only slows the drift down, but it also keeps your baits on the bottom, it keeps you into the seas. It makes for a comfortable way to bottom fish. Amanda is going to be angler number one on the left side of the motors. And let's pretend we have imaginary angler number two on the right side of the motors. Let's say, pretend we have a triplet, Amanda. Our, yeah, tri our triplet's right over there. there, okay? We need like a flat Stanley. Flat Stanley. A flat yeah. Emily and Amanda. A flat Amanda Lee. <laughs> a flat Amanda Lee. Okay, and my job is here at the motors, at the wheel, and Amanda is going to start drifting the bottom, and she's going to sit right there. I'm setting my bait down Setting right her now. bait down. I will let you know when I'm on bottom, and I can show you what this looks like. I'm the angler. Pretend that I'm the angler, and I'm actually holding this rod. I, in real life, I would be holding it in my hand, waiting to feel that bite. But as you can see, my line is straight up and down off the transom. It's maintaining bottom the entire time, because Emily is pushing the motor in reverse to make sure that my bait is in line with the boat. So what that's doing is that's stopping the current from taking my bait away. We are essentially letting the bait drift at the speed the bait wants to drift, and we are matching the boat to the baits. 
that's what we're doing. So by matching the boat to the baits, we're always making sure we're up and down. We're straight on top of our bait, which helps us maintain bottom. We don't have a ton of scope out. We're straight up and down. My bait is here, the boat's here. The bait wants to travel this way. Emily is making sure that she's pushing us against the current to stay on top of our baits. Did that make sense? I really hope that made sense to you guys. I feel like that's the best way we could explain it. There are probably a hundred different ways you can drift the wrecks. You can power drift, you can drift, you can, I mean, essentially I can walk away from my rod and when that rod tip gets that bite, I can run over, grab it and reel. I would not recommend that method. I recommend you <laughs> hold on to your rod to really feel the bite. Those are the two methods that we feel are really helpful. The one is turning side sea, drifting, leaving the wheel. It's the angler's job to maintain bottom. The second method is power drifting. Having a captain make sure that the boat is straight on top of your baits. The angler doesn't have to worry so much. All the angler has to do is feel that bite and reel. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you our go-to bottom rig that I would do if we're power drifting a wreck or we're side sea drifting a wreck. I'm going to show you my rig and show you how I would fish it. To show you my rig, usually I would do this with a conventional reel like an accurate four or five hundred but you can do it with spinners and we didn't have spinners with us today. We didn't have spinners. You can do it with spinners but we didn't have conventionals <laughs> with us today. But usually I would be using my accurate 400 or 500. My reel, whether it's a conventional or a spinner, they're usually spooled with 330 with, wow, 330? <laughs> what do you, I don't even know what you're trying to say my right now. My reel is usually spooled with 30 to 40 pound braid. 30 to 40 pound whether braid. Whether it's a spinner or a conventional, my reel is spooled with 30 to 40 pound braid. I'm tying a bimney on my braid and a double uni to a wind down leader. So right here, let me pull this out for you. Here's my double uni. This is my wind down leader. That's my 30 or 40 pound braid. So I have a little wind down leader that is basically the length up the rod, down the rod. Basically Probably 10 guys, 10, feet of wind 15, down leader. 20 feet at max. Wind down leader. On my wind down leader, I have an egg sinker. Your egg sinker is gonna depend how heavy it is depending on how strong the current is. As long as you're maintaining bottom, you have a good size, probably in the six ounce to 10 ounce range. If you're fishing very deep water, sometimes you'll need 16 ounces. I have a bead. The purpose of the bead is so that your ball bearing swivel down here doesn't get stuck inside right. of your sinker. These holes are huge. You can buy sinkers with smaller holes, holes and you wouldn't need the bead. But I always like to keep beads on the boat anyways because you just never know when you'll need them. From our sinker to our bead, we have a ball bearing swivel and on this end is our leader. We have a 40 pound floral leader. Today we are fishing around 5 feet of leader. It's a 40 pound floral leader for today. You can fish anywhere from 5 feet of leader to 30 feet of leader. Depending on if you're dropping your baits back and letting your fish swallow the bait, you can get away with a shorter leader. If you're just reeling as soon as you feel that bite, a longer leader is probably going to be better. I have a 50 circle hook. I would actually recommend using a 70. I just didn't have any on the boat. But you want to use a circle hook, and today's bait is a D bone ballyhoo, which means we basically filleted the backbone out of it. You can also use a piece of squid, you can use a bonita strip. There's a lot of options. D bone mullet. D bone mullet. I mean, you can do a lot. The sun is starting to set. We're running out of daylight, but we really hope that made sense, those two drifting methods. If you have any more questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Sometimes it's tough to verbalize what I'm trying to show you right. with the I boat. I wish you guys could be here. We can explain it to you this way. This video is coming to a close. The sun is setting. Make sure you follow Gale Force Twins on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Like and subscribe for more.